Hey folks, it's Jake here from Metalwani and we're here with Martin Larson from At The Gates. Martin, how are you going? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And it's it's really good to catch up with you and have a chat because you guys are actually down here uh, next week in Australia as part of the Triple Bill Kill Tour with you've got the Haunted and Witchery coming on, uh, along for the ride. So how does it feel to be making your way back to Australia? It feels great. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm just grateful I, I, I get to do this. And uh, we're very much looking forward to being back in Australia. Yeah. yeah, it must be a great feeling being able to tour the world. And this is only your third tour in Australia, I believe. So you had your previous tours in 2012 and 2017. What made you guys decide right. you wanted to get back here? Was it the reception from the crowd at the shows or is it just that Australia was a destination that you had to travel to to tour to? But you don't have to go anywhere, uh, I suppose. But but uh, we, you know, you get offers, and uh, we we like to go anywhere and everywhere. And and uh, as you said, the reception has always been good. So I mean, <laughs> that obviously helps. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We just we just like to see the world and play metal. <laughs> That's a very good, very good uh, outlook to have there. So uh, how do you rate Australia in terms of the rest of the world? I mean, obviously, we aren't going to have the massive crowds that you would be familiar with in Europe, but what has the reaction been like during those earlier trips to Australia? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure metal fans, fans around the world are, are pretty much similar. Uh, I'd say... Uh, you know, in one way, without sounding too much of a like a like a hippie, uh, I'd say that there are more similarities between metal fans, you know, in different countries than are than, than there is between you know different kinds of people within the one random country. That, that's my take on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your latest album. At the Gates' latest album, To Drink From The Night Itself, it was released almost 12 months ago now and received pretty favourable reviews. Uh, it was the first album to feature Jonas Stahlhammer on guitar and from all accounts it looks like Jonas has assumed the role of lead guitarist seamlessly in the band. Was writing for the yeah, yeah. album difficult having another guitarist there to bounce ideas off? Um, no, it was different the last time around because uh, mo when he got into the band, most of it was already written. So he worked out some some he worked out some solos with the uh, bass Jonas, the songwriter for for the last one. Uh, but apart from that, he, the the writing influence was, wasn't uh, very big from from him. Uh, or arranging or what have you so we'll, we'll see the next time around hopefully it's going to be a little bit more of a, of a group effort yeah yeah cool and i guess uh, like one thing that i've always been intrigued with since jonas has joined the band is does it get difficult having two jonas's in the band um in group chats it could be you know referring to jonas it was a little you know uh, um confusing at first but we uh, we kind of just go by j1 and j2 <laughs> so <laughs> j1 being the the first the the the, the elder member yeah. um so uh, it's it's all sorted now yeah and uh, and also new guy is usually referred to as stories from his surname so yeah, yeah fair enough yeah no that's cool that's cool that's really good to hear so how has the reception for the album been now that it's been around for about 12 months? And is there anything that either yourself or the band thinks that they should have done differently looking back on it now? I don't think any of us think that way. I don't think that's healthy. But um, no, I'm not sure. If it, I mean, it's all a learning thing. Well, if, if, if you have any kind of thoughts that way you, you uh, i'm sure you do it differently next time around yeah that's the only thing i can think of yeah and last week you guys released a film clip for the colors of the beast so it was a stunning film clip it was uh quite abstract and i i feel it captures the tone 
of that song perfectly. So how happy are you with how the film clip has turned out and the reception that it's received? Thank you. We're, we're very, very, very pleased with uh, how it turned out. And uh, the the director is, is Kostin, the, the guy who, who's, who did the album, the, the album covers for the last two records. And uh, he's been a really, really good collaborator for us for these last few years with uh, all kind of all kinds of visual uh, material for At The Gates. So, and, and I'd say he's really surpassed himself on, on this last one. Yeah, um, it, it is a quite a stunning film clip. Like, uh, watching it just before again, it's it's very, like I said, it's very abstract, but I, th- I feel that it fits the tone of the, that song perfectly. So, uh, he did a really good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, because uh, uh, him and Tompa, uh, the, who writes the lyrics, have had, have had endless discussions about the, the content and symbolism and what have you so um, um, and they really connected on that so they're kind of kindred spirits in, in, in that sense oh, that's good uh, creatively hear. creative wise yeah. yeah yeah cool no that's that's really good to hear so this one's a little bit deeper for you Martin and it sort of it ranges all the way back through your career as a member of At the Gate. So you're you're part of a band that has seen music change across mediums. And when I say that, I mean you've gone from the old cassette tape days to CDs, and now to digital sales and all of the production and recording te- techniques that go along with those transformations. So. What would you say has been the biggest challenge for At The Gates throughout their career in terms of innovating with those changes? I'm not sure. That's a big question. Uh, I think in general, we're, we've been lucky as a band because uh, we've always had a, a growing following, which, you know, if you... I mean, with us, for an instance, we we recorded the you know we recorded an album in 95 and we quit and then we did nothing for 12 years yeah. and when we finally did something we were much so much more established than we were when we quit that usually never happens so um, I, I think our story is a little bit different than, than most yeah, and I think that one of the key things, especially there, is that it sort of seems like when, when you guys did make your return after that 12-year hiatus, it was a, like you'd sort of gone from back in the era where tapes were sort of the uh, thing and CDs were just sort of rolling in, and then you've when you've returned, you've come in on the back end of CDs and going into the, the digital sort of market. So I think that's probably helped a lot in that you've bypassed one of those sort of gaps there and you haven't really had to adapt yourselves for that. But, yeah, it, it, it was an interesting question that I thought I'd pose. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, thinking more about it, I think if... Because if we were another band, I think we would have had much more problems with the, like the social media stuff. We had a lot of things for free in a way. Uh, with having this huge following, or it, not huge, but compared to 90s, huge. Yeah. Um, so if we hadn't had that, it, it, we would. I, I'm sure we would have had problems reaching out to people uh, and not just disappearing in the, you know, the white noise of modern day internet and um, what, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, no. If fair, you, if you kind of get what I'm thinking. Now, I did want to get your thoughts on the legacy that the band has created through their music. Now, I know that you've been a part of the band for a very long time, and this is a band that fans absolutely adore. And as we spoke about, even during your hiatus, you still had such a big following. So, does it ever feel surreal that there are thousands of bands that are out there, up and coming artists that are trying to recapture that same magic that you guys have managed to harness throughout your entire career? Yeah, it does. Uh, I don't think too much of it, but but when I do, it's it's strange. Uh, I don't think you ever really get used to that. I don't mind it. It's just, you know, 
is strange. Um, but um, I'm sure it's the same for, you know, when we meet people down the road that we grew up listening to and telling them the same thing and or saying how we're influenced by this and that band. And because a lot of times I don't really see the, the similarities, um, but I kind of drew myself in a <laughs> corner here. I, I'm not sure what, what I'm trying to say, yeah. but, but it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's strange. It is. Yeah, no, fair enough. Now, you guys have just announced, it was only a day or so ago, a massive tour of the United States with the Monomath, Arch Enemy and Grand Magis. So I'd like to nickname that tour the Swedish Invasion of the US. Um, it's obviously a massive lineup, which you must be excited to be a part of and also excited to uh, get to see your US fans again. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we decided to do it uh, differently this time around because usually after, you know, when we got back together 10 years ago, we've only done headline shows, uh, which is, you know, good in all kinds of ways. But uh, eventually you start playing to kind of the same people. Uh, so we, we wanted the, the, the challenge of trying to win over other people's fans, for, you know, touring for this one. Uh, and hopefully there's going to be more headline tours down the road but but for now this feels like a an exciting thing to do yeah yeah definitely and it will definitely be a nice little challenge for you so one final one for you martin i know that you've got a few select dates around europe during this summer before the big u.s tour that we've just spoken about later on in the year can fans expect any more dates to be added for this year or are you looking at sort of keeping quiet, maybe writing new material. I, I guess I want to know what does the rest of 2019 hold for At The Gates? Uh, well, we've already begun dabbling in writing. Uh, it's going to take a, some, some time, but we've started at least. Uh, and there are more shows coming. Uh, so it, it's, it's looking to be pretty much filled up the whole rest of the year. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. It's good that you guys are busy and that you're working on new material. So, Martin, thanks so much for taking the time to have a chat with us. We look forward to seeing you when sure, you come no down problem. here next week. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be yeah, some really. good shows. Yeah, thank you for your time and your support. It's really appreciated. And I'll see you in Australia.